Hey everyone, what we're going to do today is a crappy jig. In the vise we have a 1 16th ounce do it freestyle head and the color is transparent copper and it's got a size 4 Eagle Claw uh, 500 black platinum little nasty. And we're going to start off with some white to uh, 140 denier flat wax nylon thread. We're going to get our base started. And we're going to tie down all right around the hook point, maybe a little past. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to rack back up to the, the head here. And the first thing we're going to do is this is a grizzly olive saddle hackle. And I'm going to take this tip and tie it in. Uh, you can use barred neck hackle or even just plain olive neck hackle. A lot of different things you can do. And I've done this in a lot of variations. And once again, I'm using scrap, which um, is one of the reasons I'm using this. If I was going to tie this and buy the materials for it, I would just get the, the, the barred neck hackle and that would save you some some money but since I have this grizzly uh, saddle hackle I a lot of times the tips that are different or feathers that I can't use I'll put in my scrap bin and I'll use them for this kind of thing so we're gonna take this tip and we're gonna tie it in on the back and you want it that the curve is facing down that's how uh, it's going to orient in the water that it's going to be sticking up. So that's why I, I want it that it, the curve is down. And you want it about an inch past the bend of the hook, no more than an inch and a quarter. And I'm going to tie this in all the way down. And I'm going to stop every now and then to make sure that I'm still on top of the hook. We're still pretty straight, so that's good. I'm going to go back up, and the next thing we're going to do is I got two V's here um, that I got just from a regular olive, uh, olive neck hackle, and I they're they um, I'm sorry, the feather was real wide at the base, so I took it there and I cut them about. The stem part's about a half inch, maybe a little less, maybe like three eighths. And I'm going to put them on top and tie those in. And the reason I did that is because I like the, the long barbs and I like the fact that they go out to about the middle of the feather. That way I can add a little bit of bulk uh, to that tip. and still not have that much material tied in. So that way I don't build a real bulky jig at the tail. Gives me a nice look. And it gives nice action in the water. I'm not an expert with, you know, using feathers and V's like this, like some guys are. But what I do works. So I try to take what I know and um, give it out to everybody that's watching. So now I got the tail tied in and we're going to add some flash and what we're going to add is some copper. Uh, this is copper crystal flash. I'm going to put it in. It, it's almost at the tip of the feather, not quite, not quite to the end, just a little bit short. Make a couple wraps just to hold it there. And then we're going to fold it over. And we'll trim it. And do the same thing on the opposite side. That's I call this pattern copper head minnow. Just uh, 
the head color is this transparent copper. That's actually the name of the paint. And uh, it was just me playing around with different colors. Uh, I wanted something to do with this paint, and I thought, boy, you know, I never see anybody using, like, a copper-colored crappy jig, and I fish a lot of pressured water, so we came up with this pattern. We used the, the olive uh, tail section to give it a little bit of, uh, just to break it up a little bit, and then we used a lot of the, this copper flash. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put on this, uh, it's root beer ice chenille. But, of course, it, it has a copper tint to it. It, look, it looks like copper. So, I went with that. And we found it in a moderately stained water when, when you got some sunlight. Uh, it really works well. And just kept it. And over the years, it's been really good of course this root beer ice chenille um, it has different uh, almost like a gold tint when when light hits it. it it'll flash gold but the overall body look on it is copper some different stuff that's for sure this ice chenille has an iridescent quality to it uh, when the sun hits it, especially in the water. And of course, I'm going to start double wrapping up here to get a little bit of a taper, as I normally do with my crappy jigs. Not too much. We'll tie it off just shy of the head. That's how a lot of my patterns start. Not all of them, but um, sometimes it's I'll get a paint or a material that I think is interesting, and we'll see. We'll experiment with it and see what happens. Sometimes it's not good. Sometimes it is. Now, we could keep it just like that, but what I like to do is, again, I pulled uh, this feather out of a scrap bin, and we're going to tie in. It's a grizzly olive uh, saddle feather, and we're going to tie that in to make a collar. This is optional. You do not have to do it. And all it takes is a couple of wraps. That's it. Cut the tip out, making sure not to get any of the barbs. And we're going to push it back. And we'll whip finish. That's all we really need. Just one set for this. And there you have it. That is our copperhead minnow. Relatively easy to tie, a lot of flash in the water, very nice action, and it looks different. Again, moderately stained water. Um, sorry about that. I guess I should put it in, the vi in uh, my clamp here, my hemostat. That way it's easier to see. Yeah, this collar adds a little bit to it, breaks up the color. Relatively easy jig to tie. And like I said, it, it's, a, it's a color you don't see often. Uh, 
and believe it or not, it does have a natural appearance in the water. Uh, around here we have a bait fish, they call them red rosies, they're sold in bait shops a lot, and I think that's what this represents. It has, it has like I said, a red hue, copper, uh, you see the glints of gold. Works really well. Give it a try, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.